Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper and I've got a warning for you guys today, especially anyone who's just trying to get into the homestead life, be more self-sufficient, get out of the cities, into the country, take stewardship over some own, some of your own things, including your, your food supply. Do not get trapped on the homestead. Now, I'm one of those who uh, would prefer to live at my bug out location. So in the event of stuff going kind of sideways, I'd rather be sitting on my property than having to flee and travel somewhere to wherever my supplies are, wherever things are set up. Uh, of course, if I lived in the city, if I lived somewhere else, I would not want that to be my bug out location. But there is a type of being trapped on the homestead, which happens to people even before everything breaks down and goes crazy. And it's a mistake many people make, and I don't want you guys to make that mistake. I want you guys to be able to have this in your mind ahead of time, and as you're setting up your life, or even now if you're starting on the homestead path, you know, if you're doing it already, if you have some animals, if you've got your property, if you're, you're working on these things, take this into consideration, because it's gonna drastically help you as things move forward. When we first made this driveway back in like 2017, I tucked a bunch of wood off to the side. I have it covered, but cutting a bunch of it up into firewood to make sure I got a good supply for this winter. Oh. But over here, I've got our sheep. Four horned Jacob sheep and Shetland Finn sheep. These guys require quite a bit of my attention or at least my family's attention on a daily basis. And I know some people, I've got one brother who's got a lot of things set up really well um, for some of his quail, his other animals, where they have a good supply of food on hand. They have a good supply of water on hand. Now if I had lush green pastures all year long and I had a pond um, that they could get water from, then I could leave these guys if I had decent enough fences, which I think I do, to prevent predators from getting them, I could leave them for weeks without really much interaction because all their food and their water would be taken care of. Also, if I had uh, maybe a well with uh, an automatic leveler in one of the, um, you know, water troughs or maybe some rain catchment that went into a drinking thing for them that was kind of self-fed, you know, then they'd be able to stay watered a little easier right now we have to fill it by hand. And it's those chores that keep your animals alive that can trap you on your homestead. Here, what do we have? We have meat birds right now. I'm probably gonna take some more out later today. We have guinea fowl, we have Muscovy ducks, we have our regular laying chickens. We have another batch of kind of exotic chickens that we're raising up. We have our cow and her calf. Cow has to be milked, of course we can leave the calf with it. So that chore can kind of be crossed off pretty easily if we leave the calf with it overnight. Um, we've got our sheep, we've got our dogs. None of that stuff is really set up where we don't have to do the chores. Um, because we're mostly home, because we like to be home, it works out pretty easy for us and uh, it works out nice enough too with our children the way that they are where we, being Mama Pepper and I, we don't really do many of the chores because the children take care of them all. And if they need something, or if something's, you know, seeming like an animal's sick or something, then they just let us know. But besides that, they kind of run the show, which is part of the responsibility um, that we're kind of cultivating in them as people. But one of the dangers that people run into as they begin a homesteading lifestyle is if you move off into the middle of nowhere, and there's nothing wrong with that, and if you start having a lot of high maintenance chores to keep your animals alive, and if you don't have any trustworthy neighbors or people near enough by that uh, you have a good relationship with that can cover your chores in your absence, then you're trapped on your homestead. Um, thankfully, we have a number of neighbors that we've had take care of our chores uh, in times past. I can think of offhand at least three of our neighbors right now 
um, or their families, members of their families, that we've had take care of our chores when we've left. We've left for a week or more before, or maybe an overnighter, and maybe something like that. Thankfully, we have a number of neighbors who milk their own cows, milk their own goats, so they're familiar with that type of stuff. And right now, actually, we're taking care of somebody's chores because we have some friends who uh, left for an overnighter. So last night and then also this morning, and right now we're about to head up for a midday check. Um, we're taking care of their chores. And it involves a number of animals that we have, you know, dogs and chickens. But then it has a number of cats. Then it has a number of chores that we don't have, like, uh, like peacocks and goats. We don't have any of those right now. But thankfully, we've got some good milkers. I will run a little bit of footage this morning from uh, Pinky Pepper milking out three of their goats real quick. Um, she went up last night, right after sundown, she milked the goats and uh, it took her on average about a, a minute and 20 seconds per goat to milk them out, um, which is crazy, but she's got a certain level of confidence and familiarity with animals and she knows how to work with them and kind of uh, exert her authority over them but also work with them in a way that's similar to that which the uh, the kids would do, you know, like bumping the bag and stuff like that, where she gets a good amount out quick and gets the job done. But you think about three goats a minute and 20 each, that's four minutes to milk three goats. And I'll let her comment after we roll this footage.
friends whose chores we were just doing, um, they do our chores a lot when we go places and visit people and so we um, do their chores too sometimes and it's a lot of fun because we get to see our goats that we used to have and then you know um, see their animals and it's more fun because it's not our chores. and. Um, just um, go up there and it's a lot of fun to do all of their chores. There's not that many and they're like all in one spot kind of compared to like our chores. They're like everywhere. Um, but we do their chores um, quite often when they have to leave um, and so we know them pretty well and so they have three goats that we milk, well that we're milking this time and I, we used to milk the goats sometimes. We just go up there and then we do their chores and we milk them. And I thought I could milk really fast and I thought their teeth were really hard to squeeze out the milk. And I would take like 10 minutes for one goat, probably. And I thought that was really good and really fast. And then we started milking Xenia. And I've gotten faster because I can milk her half a gallon out in six minutes, which was the last time I tied myself, which was a few weeks ago. But now, I don't know how fast I can milk her, but I found out her teeth are really hard to squeeze compared to the goats. I mean, they're easier to squeeze out than our friend's cows, which are like a lot harder. But um, the goats, why I can milk them faster is because even though I get half a gallon, the same amount as Xenia, and it only takes me four minutes, um, is because it's easier to squeeze out the milk even though there's some of them their teeth are like pointing forward and then some are like really fat um, it's just faster because it's easier to squirt the milk out and so that's why I can do it so fast and why you see me squirting it out in there is because I don't have that bad of aim um, I'm just squirting all the bacteria that could be in the front of the teat out um, and I just do two squirts out from each teat to clear any um, bacteria that might be in there so then we don't get that in our milk and then after that I start milking into the bucket after I squirt it out and it's good to get you get to know your neighbors so that you aren't just stuck at your homestead and they can come do your chores um, or you can do theirs, which is so much fun. Um, so that's just easier for you if you get to know your neighbors. And you don't always have to pay people money uh, for doing your chores. Sometimes you can give them eggs and just let them keep the eggs that they get while you're gone, or milk if you have milk, or just different things that you have on your farm that you can give them as like their pay. And that's a good point too is, you know, part of the chores, the chores are what generate a lot of the things with the animals. If you're feeding and watering them and they're giving you milk or meat or eggs or the next generation of animals, that's a good way to uh, thank somebody for doing your chores. You know, you could even ask if you've got some chickens, uh, say that's all your, you know, those are the homestead starter kit. A lot of times people get into chickens. Say you've got a neighbor and ask them, hey, I've got a, a trip coming up in a week or two. It's just gonna be for a couple nights. Um, would you mind taking care of my chickens? And even if your neighbors don't have a frame of reference, what you could do is have them over a couple times ahead of time, show them little stuff and be like, you know, would you be willing to feed my chickens and collect the eggs and keep the eggs? And that may be enough of a deal there. Um, normally the eggs that we generate on a daily basis are more than we need. Uh, we're water glassing eggs on the counter right now and we save, we save a good amount every summer 
to help get us through the winter. Um, so even what we get on a daily basis is normally more than we need. Well, if we're not here, we're not eating the eggs here. So if those go to bless somebody else, that just makes sense. Or same thing with the milk. Um, our neighbor said, hey, do you want the, the goat milk that we're gonna milk out? And we had it for breakfast this morning. Um, their billies are not too far away from, from their does, but uh, the milk tastes amazing. It was great. I wouldn't have known the difference. Um, this morning with my breakfast, I really enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, we got some milk from them last night and then some more this morning just for doing their chores, and it's, it's a blessing to us. Um, the amount that our cow gives is, is a limited amount. Uh, we use it all up, so to have some extra just allows us some extra milk meals, uh, like an extra bowl of cereal for the family or something like that. What do you got, Bug? Box turtles? What do you think those ones are, males or females? This one's a boy and that one's a girl. Oh, okay. So you have a, a pair of females. Whoa, he even opened its mouth and it tried to flip. That's pretty cool. And those guys are just going to wander around on our property and be nice wild turtles here? Yeah. I like that. We caught some before. Yeah. Have you ever got pinched by one? Yeah. When they go into their shell? That guy seems pretty friendly though, huh? He's not too scared of you. Can you go show me the other one too quick? Do you know what kind of box turtles those are? No. Thor, they're three-toed box turtles. Look at their back legs and then count how many claws they have. Three. Three. So they're three-toed box turtles. And they have three little toes. And four. Yeah, their front feet are five. five. Yep. But their backs have a couple. And do you know they'll eat berries and fruits and leaves and stuff, but do you know what their favorite thing is to eat? No. Bugs, living things, earthworms, slugs. We do have some baby um, slugs. We have some slugs? Baby frogs. Oh, baby frogs. Yeah, they would eat that too. That one's already in the woods. It is. Cool. Thanks for showing me. With as difficult as life can be anyways, we like to set things up and streamline the process. Um, with having as many children who are as capable as we do, it gives us a lot of flexibility and not really needing to uh, have everything be super easy because there's enough of us that it's not that difficult to do things a little more labor intensive. Um, that's okay. But to streamline the process wherever you can, to have automatic waterers, to have good water supplies on hand, that whatever your animals are gonna need, they have open access to. That's absolutely awesome and that's a great way to set things up. The same thing with the feeders. If you can have as many automatic feeders as you you know can, whatever your animals are gonna need. So that way, maybe even on a daily basis or by daily, you know, morning and night, just to check on them and make sure they're doing okay. And if it's something that you only have to kind of add to the system um, once a week or something, that's there's nothing wrong with that. We're working on a number of things here to streamline some of the processes. I want to work before this year is up on putting some water catchment off of our poultry that then feeds a reservoir for the poultry that then waters the poultry. So that way, in times like this where it hasn't rained much in forever, it would be dry. But when it is raining, where as long as they have water available, you know, we don't need to touch that. That would be great. Um, same thing with some different feed things. Um, we like to give them kind of open access to feed. Maybe I'll make a gravity feeder, much like our oyster shell um, supplier, where it's just a giant thing that they can peck out the bottom and it lowers over time. We could do that with a feeder too. Um, I know I have a buddy who does that for his quail, and then he's able just to take off for quite a while if he wants, and the quail lay their eggs, they eat their feed, they have their water, and the process just goes on. That way, if you do have somebody who is uh, covering for you, they really only need to peek at things, and it only makes your life easier when you're home, but it makes your life easier when you're away. 
Um, if you're able to set everything up where it's completely automatic, I would still suggest having somebody periodically check on your stuff while you're away. Um, people do that even with house sitting when they don't have any animals. You know, can you just make sure nobody's messing with my house, nobody's coming on our property while we're gone, that type of thing. But for us, it's worked out very well for us that even though we're out in the middle of nowhere, even though we live out in the woods outside of a small town, there's a number of good neighbors that we have good relationships by who are very close. So our friends, uh, they were able to head up to Branson for an overnighter and not have to worry about their animals. Um, I was able to be in communication with them a little bit with the phone just to let them know a couple things. Um, and they actually had a little bit extra stuff they wanted us to look into that they didn't um, initially tell us about. So then we just kind of added that to our to-do our to -do list. But um, it's good to be able to leave the city, be more self-sufficient, have stewardship of some stuff and take care of it on your own. But don't get trapped as you're doing it. Think about it. You know, when we originally were doing our lifestyle transition, we were going in with some people. They were also doing the same thing, so we thought it made sense, like, we may not exactly just do it on our own, but they're gonna do it right now, like, what if we just go in with them? And that makes it a little easier. Or if you, uh, you know, have a good friend who's doing that type of thing, living the type of lifestyle you're thinking about, and some property opens up next to them, well then go for that. Just a couple ideas. If there's other stuff you guys have, leave it in the comment section, please, to encourage others or give them better insight than I was able to provide thus far. But just thought I'd give that as a friendly reminder. Don't get trapped on the homestead. I would recommend having a homestead that can be your bug out location for sure, that you can hole up there if you need to, but to be trapped on the homestead, not able to attend family events, not able to take a vacation, not able just to take a break for a moment and go somewhere else and get a hotel, that may not work out that good. Now we like being here a lot more than we like being other places, we really do, but it's nice to get away every once in a while and thankfully we're not trapped so we have the opportunity to get away every once in a while. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Papa out.